for me to bring this period of time and this subject matter to life is really an incredible experience. You get to choose how you want to conduct the war. It's basically shining the light of history right on a conflict that normally doesn't get this much play. It's quite an honor, and I hope that we do the subject matter justice because it's, it's something that we don't take lightly. So the player takes on the role as either the uh, theater commander or field commander. And the theater commander is the large scale operations that took place on the Western Front. So this is organizing your troops, handling the resources and uh, bringing in reinforcements. You're setting up artillery, you're positioning your troops, and you're basically getting your troops ready for battle at the front line so that when you go into each individual battle, you're ready to go. But then when you go into field commander, you're actually giving the troops on the map orders, the attack, the, uh, the objectives. The field commander allows you to control the actual battles in an RTS format. So build up your trench lines, build up your defenses, and then have your troops fight over the territory. Oh, it's a, a, a all-encompassing strategy game which really takes you into the immersion of World War I. World War I was a battle of inches. Trench warfare was something that we wanted to mimic in our game. You get to place the trenches onto the battlefield yourself in preparation for battle. You're positioning them in the right way to create interesting fields of fire so that you can defend oncoming waves. And you're also trying to figure out how to breach the enemy trenches as well. You have to spend your resources and your, your supply to, to place them. Trench warfare is very, very brutal. And you really have to figure out your timing of when you're going to move forces out of a trench because a trench is a highly defended location. When you're attacking, uh, a lot of the time you'll travel through the trenches, which is something that we worked really hard to get right, because you want to prevent your companies from taking damage from the incoming artillery. When you're engaging your opponent uh, in their trenches before you get there, you have to cross no man's land, and your enemy is going to be very well fortified. So what you're going to want to use is your tools, uh, such as your artillery or potentially aircraft, to suppress their positions to give your men the space and time to clear their trenches. Any enemies that are in those trenches that you're trying to take are hugely well defended against you. And so it's going to be quite the endeavor to try and capture a trench. Reverse that, right? When you're defending, right, it becomes more of a being able to set out your trenches along with your uh, machine gun spurs and your mortars. Building up barbed wire machine guns, making sure your trenches are filled with men and having reserves available to keep them out. The enemies are gonna come at you in waves and you wanna be able to mow them down so that when they actually go over the top, your troops have a better chance of success. Whenever you go into a battle and build up your trenches, those trenches are not just gonna go away on your next playthrough on that particular battlefield. All of the trenches you built will still be there and they will allow you to either upgrade them if you're researching into higher levels, or you can replace them with new ones if you want to. There's gonna be battles, obviously, all kinds of different locations across the Western Front. And as those battles take place, what was once beautiful green countryside is gonna get destroyed, demolished, burned, charred, bombarded. And on top of that, you have a seasonal change as well. So you have winter and you have summer and you have rain, and those things are also gonna play an important role in how you conduct yourself as the field commander in the game. So for example, in the winter, you might be fighting in the snow, and in the snow, your troops are gonna have less morale and they're gonna move slower. Whereas in the fall, where it's more rainy, uh, artillery is less impactful because the mud will absorb all, all of those shells. So that will change how you wanna load out your battles and, and how you fight them out. I have always been fascinated by the time period of World War I. So to see a game based in this was really a treat. I mean, I personally have never seen a World War I strategy game that was a real-time strategy. I think this was a very exciting opportunity to take something something that was like like trench warfare, right? Like when you're, you're taking your troops through the trenches and you have the artillery coming down and the camera shake. That's a really exciting moment. Traditional strategy RTS games, you know, it's usually about going in and just defeat all the forces of the enemy on the map and you win the battle and or you lose all your forces and you lose the battle. In this game, um, retreating, surrendering, uh, cease firing are all very, very viable tactics. I think to see it all come together 
as a complete campaign where I can live out the war from the very beginning to the very end or beyond, depending on my choices. Uh, I think that's really cool. We're all delighted to have the opportunity to uh, give everybody a look into what's going on inside the Great War Western Front, and we're very excited to show more in the near future.